Jordan Peterson and Bishop. I think we could have an interesting conversation about the relationship between Judaism and Christianity. So there's an idea in Christianity, which is, I think, the central idea, which is that you need to face the potential for malevolence that exists within you and in the world. So that's Christ's confrontation with the devil in the desert, with Satan in the desert. You have to come to terms with that malevolence. That's part of existence. And you have to voluntarily accept the burden of suffering. And so that's the acceptance of the cross. Okay, so you take on that. You say the suffering. So there's an idea that Christ is a messianic figure because he took the suffering of the world onto himself. And what that means to me is that he was someone speaking um, conceptually who decided that the suffering of the world was his responsibility and that that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to decide that that's your responsibility. You take that on a bur as a burden. You do the same with the malevolence. So when you read history, you read history as a perpetrator, right? Maybe you also read it as a victim, but you certainly read it as a perpetrator. And then that's on you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then the question is, what happens when you do that? And I would say the answer is two things, is that first of all, it starts to force you to develop, like to learn what you need to learn in the world and to absorb the information that would enable you to start to face the suffering and to rectify it. So that forces you to become a more competent person. And that's the socialization part that you thought of as so important. But then there's a secondary thing that happens too, which is that taking on that additional stress and demand voluntarily transforms you biologically because within your genetic structure, let's say, there's all sorts of potential, but that won't be unlocked unless you place yourself in a position where the demands necessitate it. Um, just so y'all know, and if you like this type of content, please do me a favor and hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell so that when we do post new content, you'd be the first to be notified. Um, reason why I'm checking this out is because um, obviously um, it has Jordan Peterson and Ben Shapiro um, in a debate about Christianity and Judaism, Judaism. Um, but I am becoming uh, a fan of Jordan Peterson. Um, just by the way that he presents his ideas, his ideals, um, it seems like he's pure when, when it comes to the reason why um, he would like for people to have the understanding of the things he teach. Um, I'm not going to speak too much because I don't want to expose my own ignorance, <laughs> but I will say that, um, I'm, I'm really enjoying everything that I've checked out from him. Yeah. I, I don't agree with him on all accounts yet. Um, probably not even most. And plus there are still people who don't want me to react to him. I don't know why, because I still haven't seen anything about Jordan Peterson that's that's con so controversial that I shouldn't react to him. Like, that makes no sense to me. That blows my freaking mind right there. But um, I really liked his delivery when he's discussing things. Won't be unlocked unless you place yourself in a position where the demands necessitate it. And so by following that pathway, truth, let's say, the acceptance of suffering and the confrontation with malevolence, so that's the heaviest load that you could take on, then you actually produce a psychophysiological slash spiritual transformation in yourself that matures you into like the representation of the father on earth. That's why that, that's how that lays so, itself okay, so out. I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad he got us here because the question that I said to you, I, there was only one thing I said to you guys before yeah, we yeah. started that I wanted to get to something about most of the lectures that you're, when we're doing these things, you're usually talking about the Old Testament. Now, obviously you're an Old Testament guy, I'm on but my, my question was, do you think that Ben or, or just people that believe in the Old Testament exclusively are missing something. So you just laid out a case of something that potentially is missing so there. Do yes, they're missing Jesus. People who believe in the Old Testament exclusively are missing out on Jesus. That's what they're missing out on. Do you think that argue. is a fair argue. argument? Well, what I'm gonna argue is that what you just said is fundamentally unchristian in the sense uh -oh. that you're saying that everyone is supposed to imitate Jesus. Let's go, get him Ben Shapiro. Already knew you was gonna get him, bro, let's go. Let's go. This is really, this right here is Battle Royale, man. It's Jordan Peterson versus Ben Shapiro, bro. It's Battle Royale. Unchristian, in the sense that you're saying that everyone is supposed to imitate Jesus, and the basic conceit of, from what I understand, uh, speaking with Christian theologians, is that we are fundamentally incapable of taking on our own sin. And so we have to have somebody who comes in the form of Christ on earth in order to accept that suffering for us. 
and that that is the purpose of God actually embodying himself in Christ is to provide human beings the capacity to withdraw from original sin, that we don't actually have the capacity hmm. beyond a certain point to overcome, and that's why Jesus as a singular figure is necessary. I actually agree from a Judaic point of view with everything that you say, because for me, it's about accepting responsibility for my own sins on myself, and I don't have the ability to say that there is the, the suffering servant, the suffering Lamb of God, who sacrificed himself to relieve me of my sins mm -hmm. and therefore give me a fair shot at life. Yeah, well, uh, okay, so okay, that's a, that's a really good objection, I think. And I think that there's a fair bit of confusion about that in the Christian community, for example. So I would say that that perspective is more explicitly Protestant. And then, then I would put the Catholics next to that, but then I would put the Orthodox types fairly far away from that, which is why so many Orthodox Christians, I think, have been interested in what I'm saying, because their sense, and this is where my knowledge of Christian theology starts to run out, because mm -hmm. it's like I'm not an expert, I'm, you know, in the, in the doctrinal differences. Right. Um, their sense is that it's the imitation that's of primary importance. Now, mm -hmm. it's, it's a weird thing, because even in classical Christianity, you have, let, let's say, Protestant Christianity, you have this idea that, well, Christ died to save us all from our sins, and so we're already redeemed. But that doesn't alleviate the moral burden, weirdly mm -hmm. enough, because you'd think it should. So there's this paradox. And I think it's, I, I think part of the reason for that, this is, this is an extraordinarily complicated thing, but in, in, in the Brothers Karamazov, Christ comes back to earth. Right. And, um, in Seville during the Spanish Inquisition. And so he's doing his miracles and raising people <coughs> from the dead and like being all messianic. And right. the first thing that happens is the Inquisitor arrests him, right. throws right. him in right. prison, and then comes to visit him and basically says, look, um, the last thing we need after setting up this church for 2000 years is you. You're a lot of trouble. You've put a moral burden on human beings that's too much for them to bear. And so what we've done is watered it down and put some intermediaries in place so that the moral demand that your example required doesn't just crush people into nothingness, right? So every ideal is a judge. Right. So then you have the ultimate ideal. That's the ultimate judge. And from the inquisitor's point of view, that judge was too much. Mm -hmm. It was too right. demanding. And so I think there's an... And so, so anyway, so the inquisitor goes through all this argument and says, we're going to have to, you know, get rid of you again because right. you're you're just he demands like he he commands um attention from the entire room when he speaks this is what he do he and he doesn't even do it with force he does it in a smooth like in a smooth professorial way it's too much to bear mm -hmm. and so christ listens and doesn't says any doesn't say anything and then just when the inquisitor stands to leave Christ kisses him on the lips and he, the Inquisitor mm -hmm. turns white in shock and then leaves, but he leaves the door open. And that's the brilliant, uh, that's the brilliant ending of, of Dostoevsky's piece. The Grand and, Inquisitor, yeah. Yeah, and it, what makes him such a genius because he basically says something like, well, look, the, the Catholic Church did reduce the burden and it is corrupt in the way that earthly organizations are likely to be corrupt. And it does allow an out, which is why well, you can put your sins on Christ, let's say, and that alleviates your moral burden but it still keeps the damn door open. Well, this and is, that's, so th this is why I think it's really fascinating having, having spent a lot of time with Christian theologians in the past couple of years writing this book, is that the, the original conceit, I think, when, when, when you talk with people who are Christian and Jewish and you have sort of interfaith conversations, uh, the original one sentence conceit and the difference between them is that what you hear from Jews is Judaism is acts-based and Christianity is faith-based. Christianity is about the acceptance of Christ. When you accept Christ, then you've accepted what you need to accept and everything flows therefrom. Mm -hmm. And Judaism says it's not just about accepting God, it's all these mitzvot, right? There are all these commandments that you have to do, and these are what perfect you as a human being. It's, it's the performance of these commandments, accepting God's sovereignty because he's the one who gave the commandments, but you actually have to act in the world. And if you don't mm -hmm. act in the world, then you haven't fulfilled your responsibility in the world. This, and, this could also be an argument why you could have, although I know you wouldn't be thrilled yeah. per se, you could have Jewish atheists in that they believe that it's just their actions here. Yes, 100%. So, yeah. so th this is why you know Jews have had very, and, and I think most Christians believe this too, the idea of having a moral atheist is not really a difficult idea. Yeah. It's the idea of having a system built on atheism that's completely immoral and will fall apart almost immediately. And the idea of having a moral system built on atheism, if you examine your atheism closely enough, I think falls apart. I think that moral atheism is basically you separating your morality from your atheism and then ignoring your atheism in pursuit of the morality, which is, well, you can live fine that way. That's fine. But I don't think that that's psychologically sustainable. Um, in, in Man, shout out to this young guy. 
Ben Shapiro, he's he's another guy who's just extremely intelligent, and um, and he also commands like um, attention in the room as well because he he's so filled, he's so fact filled. But this conversation right here is um, is facts and is beliefs because they they keep saying and I believe and I think and I think and I believe. That's because we're talking about religion here, and um, there's so many doctrines out there, books and whatnot that was written. We don't know what was the first. Uh, well, they believe they know what was the first, but neither one of them followed the first. They follow another version of it and someone who studied it and those type of things. So um, so although you say Judaism is act-based and Christianity is um, faith-based, um, all of it to me is faith based which is well you can live fine that way that's fine but i don't think that that's psychologically sustainable um in if you actually examine the core of your ideas but with, with that said i think that christianity after its original millenarian viewpoint when when christianity first came about the idea of christ on earth was that he had ushered in the messianic era because this was it was it was a new era it was a new day and then it turns out that people looked around and went well this looks a lot like the old day right, right, not, right. not that much has changed mm -hmm. and so what changed what changed was our spiritual status that was the new redefinition of the messianic era is that the the what christ had brought to earth was a new spirit right he, he yep. brought a new spirit into the earth and he'd, he'd cleansed people of their sins and given them a fresh shot at life basically yep. uh, and that in doing so he changed the nature of of how things work well, Judaism basically said, well, we never thought that that nature changed in the first place, right? That's, that's, that's something different. And so, ironically enough, I think one of the sources of Christian anti-Semitism over time is an attempt to distinguish what makes Christianity different from Judaism other than Christ. Because Christianity and Judaism, in most of their main philosophies, have an awful lot in common. It's interesting, I just interviewed um, a, uh, a fellow named John MacArthur, who's a major pastor, major Christian theologian. I interviewed him a couple of days ago for our Sunday special. And this came up, I asked him, so where do you think the differences are between Christianity and Judaism? And he basically said, Jesus, right? That's the difference. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is the mostly honest answer because when I hear Christian theologians try to distinguish Judaism from Christianity, what they say about Judaism, I find to be not accurate as to what Judaism actually says. And when I hear Jews try to distinguish Christianity from Judaism, I think that, well, and I'm not saying they're the same thing, mm -hmm. because they're not, obviously, they're different belief systems, but in terms of the underlying value system, the reason that we say Judeo-Christian value system is because in terms of the value system itself, the commonalities are overwhelming. They're overwhelming. The differences are mostly doctrinal and historical, and in terms of what you think, God, I think that Christians read back in an Acts-based version of their own lives, through a variety of mechanisms, whether they say, well, predestination exists, but in order to show that if I really elect, I would be acting this way, right? That is an acts-based version. It's just retroactive mm -hmm. from the end. Mm -hmm. And so this is why if you say to a Christian, so you really believe that you can lead a terribly dissolute, awful, terrible life, but if you believe in Christ with the full fiber of your being, you're going to heaven? And they'll so, well, say, the, well, and, and many of them will say yes, but then you say, but what makes a good person? And they'll say, right, not, but if, uh, right, what they'll always add, but if you believe in Christ, you wouldn't do all those things. Mm -hmm. It's true, but it's, specul it's speculative because you no know, when people believe. Uh, first of all, there's parts of the Bible that that constant, that repeats how how we are are not uh, perfect perfect, and a lot of people like to lead with that. Hey, I'm not perfect. God knows my heart, so you know, only thing I got to do is is accept that God died for my sins already. So my sins have been paid for by His blood. You know, it's, it might seem silly sometimes. It it may even seem like, um, I don't know, man, um, because I'm a Christian myself. Um, and when I think about it, it's, it's some wild things that goes on in these religions. Not only the one that I adhere to, but it's all about what you believe. They say faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Was that Hebrews 11? Um, it, yeah. You don't you you don't see it, but you believe it. Just like love, you no, know? you know that's we do it every day with people that we care for. So I don't know. I think that religions was put in place um, for for good purposes. Um, some people think that religion was gonna put in place for controlling purposes. But at the end of the day, I love the fact that people can sit down and 
and speak on it and teach others about it and um, and allow them to make their decision. What do you believe when it comes to this? Which one will you give your heart to, give your all to, give your time to, give your dime to? Because you know, you're going to have to financially um, um, commit to your, your religion as well. That's the only way other people are helped so that when someone comes to the storefront and they need some help, some food for their family or something, the only way that they can get that food or that money is through the parishioners, the people who attend those um, those, regi- those religious um, organizations or communities. But anytime, specifically, Jordan Peterson is in discussion with someone, I enjoy it. And Ben Shapiro, I'm just now getting used to him because um, because he's a little he's a little bit more far than I'm used to, and I'm just now trying to get used to him. Um, Reagan, thank you so much. He said, "When when Christ died, how many of your sins were future sins?" I do not say this to encourage sin. I say this to combat the idea that you must reestablish your relationship with God every day. I reject that idea. I don't have a full idea or claim to know truth. My idea also, my um, my idea also, I appreciate you trying to learn. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you um, for that information. And I appreciate your position as well. Trying to understand this whole thing is is, is different. It can, ups- it can upset the average person, but as long as you're patient enough to be willing to at least hear it out or just talk to talk to whoever your 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 god is on a enough times i'm not gonna say on a daily basis enough times that you can build a relationship and a rapport so that you can have um a gift your your own gift of discernment you know um, what to do when to do it um um how to move um, who to see and you know what I mean you have those ideas in your mind already um, you'll be better off uh, for me most people think I'm um, I'm being ignorant when I talk about you know God and and whatnot but I just I look at God as as, as literally my father I do I look at God literally as my father and and he does know me. So and I'm a sinful I'm 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 sinful. I'm not perfect at all. And nor do I try to be. I don't care to be perfect. Perfect seems boring. It seems pointless. It seems like a lack of fun, a lack of joy. Like I don't want to be perfect. I don't. I don't want to be perfect at all. But y'all yeah, have at it. But again, I want to hear what y'all got to say about this in the comments below. And if you have yet to hit that subscribe button, please make sure you do so on your way out the door. Once again, guys, I am Van, and now we are all the LFR family. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video, hopefully inside the Patreon as well. Um, Consider joining our Twitch as well. Thank you so much for everybody who has. And um, this this, this journey will only get better and better. Hopefully, once we hit like 500k subscribers on youtube and 10,000 um here on twitch i can i can say that the same people who was with me and when we first started twitch is still with me um i would love to have those relationships um um flourishing and 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 we know a little bit about one another and whatnot you know what i mean who can claim to be an expert in god no one really but the people who study him so people who study him can claim can claim but will it be will it be true that they're experts Nah, i don't think so i don't think so at all but when when i studied the bible and um and i was being taught certain things i've been taught by the pastor and the pastor in that in that space he was the expert 